Live from the Duncan Latte Lounge. Um, our guest today is a singer, songwriter. How could I not remember this? From Toronto, Canada, multi platinum, Grammy nominated. It happened, I lost one. You lost, but you're, they can't take away your nomination. Nope. No, it's always it's solidified. Grammy loser forever. Grammy loser forever. Well, until I win one. Yeah, which is going to happen. Um, I mean, obviously, you're too talented for it not to happen. Thank you for your optimism. JP Sachs is here. That was actually not bad. Usually, like, getting in, in, uh, like introduced like by someone directly in front of you is yeah. like a, a deeply awkward experience. It's so awkward. But I feel, so here's the thing. It's funny that you say that because I feel like if I don't have some written thing, then I almost appear unprofessional or unserious, right? It's like, hey, guys, JP Sachs is here. But... I mean, I you guess seem that's extremely serious. I, I'm wearing a blazer, so I know I like that it. I'm it's, serious. It's one of my favorite colors. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I didn't invent it, but I do. I did pick it out. So, sure. okay. Um, how are you? I feel like we've arrived <laughs> to this moment in a similar, a similar Dude, space. Dude, I was having a really good day until like ten minutes ago. What went wrong? Uh, my I got here ten minutes ago. It was you. Oh, they're still upside down. <laughs> I'm just not gonna pick them up. Um, this is let's let's focus on you. How are you? How was your morning? My morning was an extension of my evening because uh, a friend of mine was in a movie and I got to go to his movie premiere. And watching my friends win is one of my favorite feelings in the whole wide world. And he won so hard. Um, it was really cool. It's a new Transformers movie. Highly recommended. Everyone go see it. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, I'm so proud of him. It was like such a special moment and like all of his friends, we were just in a row and we were just like yelling the whole time uh, about how magnificent as of an uh, actor and human he Who's is. Who's your friend? His name is Anthony Ramos. Uh, he's a good friend of ours too. We love him. He's so easy to love. That's what I told him after the premiere. I was like, dude, I'm grateful for you because like watching you shine is really special, but I'm really grateful for you specifically because you're so easy to root for, and thank you for being the kind of human that is so easy to want to see do well. And this was just such a joyful experience. So that was my last night, which extended into my morning. Oh my God, I mean, I feel like being your friend is really cool <laughs> and really, really fulfilling. That's so sweet that you're so supportive of your friends. Only if you're famous. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, of course. I, I wholeheartedly support the friends who I feel like I have some sort of like clout by being connected to. Yeah, like can you gain anything from them in the future? Exactly. Exactly. It's it's absolutely a value proposition. Okay. If I if I feel like we're a friend, but you have like under 500 Instagram followers, like I won't even answer a text. Yeah. Unless it's for like 100 bucks. Yeah. Well, I okay. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, can we end this? Because <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, dude. Well, I think it's funny that you start off sort of talking about like your friends and um, just how supportive you are, and in, in I don't know wording that so beautifully because you are a poet and you are your lyricism. It was so wholesome. I had to mitigate it with the with the skepticism. <laughs> no, it's okay. I understand the dichotomy of it. It's it's totally. That's one of my favorite words. Isn't it a good word? Ten I points. really like it too. I finally learned what it meant, and now I use uh, it all the time because I think it's really cool. It makes me feel that's smart. How I felt about nebulous. What does nebulous mean? I learned what it meant. I use it all the time. What is it? It basically just means like vague but it makes you sound pretentious oh my god i'm gonna use it today like a lot I, Go for yeah it. okay cool i'm gonna try to use it in this interview um let me see if i can get that down uh, remind me of the definition again vague vague okay see um so but yeah i mean i think some, one of the things that um you're really appreciated for is is your sort of vulnerability emotionality the way that you are able to take thoughts that exist in all of our brains and kind of translate them into songs and make us feel things that we didn't know we needed to feel or that we didn't want to feel. I mean, uh, what's so you know? What's your connection to sort of songwriting? And, and you know, a lot of people say it's therapy. A lot of people say I do it for me. You know, it makes me feel good. But what's your sort of relationship with writing and words and and, and putting them into songs? Yeah, I have trouble feeling um, emotionally connected to myself. I have trouble feeling lost and present in moments, and I have for a really long time since I learned an emotional experience through childhood that was like not the most ideal, and I think because of that, I grew up recognizing that unless I could describe what I was feeling to myself, I didn't actually know how to let that feeling exist in my body. Mm -hmm. And so that process of learning how to, um, learning how to fall into a moment as a person happened to just translate into the way I write songs, which is my attempt at explaining to myself what I'm feeling in a way that synthesizes the actual moment. And then when other people listen to those songs, uh, coincidentally, 
because I'm a basic human, living a basic human experience, and mm -hmm. all of us are having a shared version of many emotions. Sometimes those songs also synthesize uh, other people's experience of themselves in a way that allows them to be closer to them, to their experience of the world in the same way that I'm making the songs to help myself. That was not nebulous at all. It was, de it was actually rambly and confusing. <laughs> I, I lost my own train <laughs> no, of thought there, no. it derailed. Sorry, I had to slip in there, I had to um, get that in. No, but I think, I think, I guess my next, <laughs> it, it didn't work. My next. No, no, it worked. It worked? Okay. It made sense. Okay, my next question, just to follow up on that, is how important it is, is it to be, I guess, emotionally aware or introspective as a songwriter? Because there's a lot of people who don't ever get that deep, and, you know, it's easy to write pop music without having those kinds of experiences. So for you, is that is that something that you couldn't do, you couldn't do this without that emotionality? I, mean, I think it just depends on the purpose of said pop music, mm. because... You know, like last night when we were at the after party, like I didn't want to listen to my shit. Like that would have been, that would have been deeply, deeply miserable to be yeah. like at a club post after party listening to halfway around the world with all of these people. It would be miserable. Yeah. No one would buy bottles. It would no one no one would make yeah, money. It would be horrible for the economy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I do think that there's pop music for different purposes, and I have recognized that the most natural jurisdiction of my music is like one to four in the morning. Hmm. either by yourself or with your friends talking about your feelings. Yeah. And then using the songs as like little multimedia inserts into your conversation. Yes, for sure. I mean, you have so many of those lyrics and ideas and thoughts that just apply in so many conversations and so many, I don't know, aspects of life and things that go on in people's brains. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think that's like my most um, cherished like spin. Mm -hmm. Like, no offense to anyone working in radio, but if like if it's like two if it's two in the morning mm -hmm. and you are having a conversation with your friend and you're just going through whether love or grief or heartbreak or pain or sense of self, whatever it may be, and then you stop mid conversation, you're like, Oh my god, I have to play you this song. I feel like it's just about what we're talking about and and then you listen to the song and then it deepens the conversation and your connection to each other and yourself. It's the best. That's the best case scenario. You know, people do that with radio though. Like people will be listening to a song and they'll be like, I've made you defensive, Turn, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I have to defend it. Turn on Z100 right now, this song is how I feel. I just meant I, I, I value that emotional uh, impact on someone's evening more than uh, chart position. Oh, no, obviously, of course. And I think, I think well, that's something that I think us as your fans appreciate about you. You know, it's, it's super about the work and, you know, giving us something that we can relate to, which we appreciate. Um, I, I read an interview where you said that you were brainwashed by pop music. And that was kind of interesting I to did. me. You did. Do you remember the context? It's a bit nebulous. Well, the dichotomy of the, <laughs> of the context. Um, I think you were talking about the fact that you grew up uh, liking jazz. I think you used the word jazz dork. That's true. I was definitely... And so, the, you've kind of... I meant by brainwashed. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, interpret my previous self. Um, that's mostly songwriting, too. Mm -hmm. I don't remember in what context I would have said I was brainwashed, but it's potentially m me pontificating on how I think people use songs as a way to represent the way that love and relationships should feel, yeah. when really I think they're a representation of how it's gone extremely wrong, just well articulated by songwriters and not a suggestion of how anyone else should do it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I like, I, I want to talk about what you have going on right now, because okay. you, yeah, because, because, because that leads us into the new song, which is I Don't Miss You, mm -hmm. um, and John Mayer's on that song. He plays the guitar. He plays the guitar. Very well. Very, very well. Um, you can't, you can't, like, not recognize a John Mayer guitar, what do you call it? Riff? Riff. We had a conversation <laughs> about this. He said he, he was talking about how he, he had to come to terms with just how stylistic his guitar playing was, yeah. and that, I don't know, I guess at some point that wasn't, he didn't f feel the pride in it that he does now, but I was like, dude, like you have so many different versions of your voice, like in your music, you have your voice in your way of speaking, you have your voice in your way of singing, obviously, you have your voice in your hands when you're playing the guitar, like that's so special to be that differentiated as an artist. Absolutely, I mean, it's, it's you, don't you want to be known for the thing that you're really good at? I want to be known for my famous friends. <laughs> Um, can you? Who, who are some of your other famous no, friends? I, I, should, I teed that up in such an unfortunate <laughs> way. It was an attempt at a callback that like wasn't as effective as I was looking for it to be. Um, but what do I want to be known for? Is a good question. I didn't ask you that question. I know, but like you could have. It could have been the. What do you want to be known for? Uh, asking good questions. 
<laughs> or Seriously, instructing I, interviewers how to ask better questions. Potentially, like, <laughs> stepping on other people's jobs and responsibilities. You have a bunch of cue cards. I do. And I, a time limit. I'm not even reading any I of them. I told you that I'm rambly when I'm sleeping. No, I love it. This is great. Um, but let's talk about the tour okay. with John Mayer. So um, you're going to be playing The Garden in October. That's so exciting. That is cool. Like you're opening for John Mayer. In Madison Square Garden, it's very special. We did it once already, so we're doing it two more times. Awesome. Um, uh, how do you prepare to open for John Mayer at the Garden? Like, I don't know. Do you, do you... How did I prepare? Is it something that you're like, oh my God, this is something you always thought about? Or not opening for uh, John Mayer, but just performing at the Garden or... Did Aubrey leave? I was about to like ask a question of someone who was there with me, but she bailed. She, oh. trusts, she trusts me way too much. <laughs> um, how did, I don't think I did anything differently. Because the John tour is unique because it, we're, we're up there by ourselves. Yeah. Well, he's up there by himself and I'm up there by myself. So it's it's the same show I would put on. It's the same show like I'll put on well, for y'all later. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess, more people. I guess being a New Yorker, I wasn't even, I was just being a New Yorker. Like, I guess I over. They gave me a jersey. What? With my name on it. They gave me a Knicks jersey with my name they on did? it. They mm did? -hmm. Wow, that's really cool. I'm not going to wear it. I was going to say, you have to wear it. I won't. Then what's but the point? I, I put it. I put it in a in a nice display case in my house. Because you should bring the display case on stage. People, we would really appreciate that. You know how pander it would be if I wore a Knicks it's jersey fine. on we, stage. It's fine. We it's fine. we we'll, no, we like it. Toronto would be pissed. <laughs> I did wear a Raptors jersey for my Toronto show. That's pandering. That's really no, pandering. No, I'm from Toronto. Yeah, but it's still it's it's like, hey, I'm. It would be here, pandering if I wore you. a different jersey in every city. I've been a Raptors fan since I was a child. It, Prove it. Okay. Would want me to like give you Vince Carter statistics? Who is that? I can show you. I would have to find it, but I did. I was gifted a Vince Carter cameo for something a couple years ago. I don't know anything you just said. Vince Carter's a basketball player. Oh. Okay. He played for the Raptors. Oh, cool. And then he played for the Nets. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so <laughs> uh, the song. <laughs> let's let's yeah. talk about the song. Um, I don't know. It's like, and again, it's another one of those songs that were like, oh my God, I don't think about him, but I do think about him. And I, I don't want to think about this person, but they pop into my mind all the time. I don't miss you, but you can't leave my head. I feel like I just summed up your entire song. Essentially. I mean, it's a lie. The whole song's a big lie. It's a lie? Yeah, definitely So it's a not lie. based off of like a real situation? No, no, no. It's, it's just the song is a collection of lies I'm telling myself. Why are you lying to yourself? I don't know. Why do we anyway lie to ourselves? Because we're having feelings that we don't want to allow ourselves to feel, so we try and replace them with things that are more tolerable to our, our desired emotional experience. Yeah, but somebody who's as emotionally evolved as you shouldn't still be doing that. I literally said earlier that I have trouble being emotionally integrated as a person, it, so I describe my feelings to myself in order to try and have them. Um, yeah, but still. I think I can decide them. It's deeply toxic. I think I can decide my feelings. Still, I know I can't, and yeah. I know that it's my... It's going to catch up to you at some point. I think I'm going to end up being a really difficult project boyfriend for someone in the future. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's ladies, he's single, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was a joke. I don't want to be anyone's project. <laughs> I, I, I'm the fixer. You are the fixer. Yeah. That's your role in the relationship? I've, I've made an attempt at it. Okay. I can't say I've done it effectively, but I've you know, I have misunderstood my role as a man and my embodiment of masculinity as my ability to make things easier for other people and never be a burden. Wow. <laughs> um, all right. Well, so <laughs> let's talk about the album. Okay. Are you excited that it's coming out soon? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us about it? About the album? Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what would you like to know about it? There's so um, many. There's I saw lyrics on your Twitter. They look amazing. You started tweeting Thanks. lyrics off of a plane, and I wanted every single song, like, right away. I really do like the words. I wrote most of it in Colombia. That's a fun thing about it. Mm. Um, while I was learning Spanish, I think the process of learning a new language recontextualized for myself the way I was understanding my emotions in English. Mm -hmm. Because I had to learn how to express myself um, in a language I had far, far less ownership over. Yeah. Um, and because, as you may have noticed over the last seven to eight minutes, I highly identify with my ability to communicate with language and like use it as a way to hide from myself as other and yeah, others. Yeah, you've avoided almost every question I've asked That's you. not true. <laughs> I just gave you non-direct answers that actually were probably more, that were probably more detailed just in the, the gray area of things. Yeah, you're very good with words. 
That Thanks. Is, so like, that is true. I appreciate that. So like, learning a different language and having to express myself consistently in a different language reshaped the way I was thinking about my feelings in my own language, which I think seeped into the music. I mean, that's that's something that's something really big to take away. Um, and and I don't know, like in the process of making an album, that's actually really helpful for you. And I think that's great. Yeah, and it's cool to be like semi like uh, like basically borderline bilingual. Wow. Do you speak any other languages? Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah, my family's Israeli. Cool. Yeah. Shabbat shalom. Ah, oh, tada. Did you say tada? Tada. It means thank you. Oh. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I feel like, is there anything else you want to talk about before they wrap us up? Because I feel like they're, they're looking at us and they're like, uh, we should probably end this. What's on your cue cards? Um, it's just like questions about your albums and stuff. Can I see them? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I want you to see this. <laughs> what, would, what would be the secret on your cue card? No, I don't want you to see that one. Like a phonetic spelling of my name? Maybe. I wouldn't be judgy about it. Oh, what do you hope listeners take away from your music? I hope they cry. Okay. You are the heartbreak king. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You will wish you the best Louis, with Louis Capaldi. Yeah, he's the heartbreak king. I'm yeah, but those words, I mean, if, like, that's him singing it, and of course that video that just made everybody like that video was have to go to therapy. But it was really messed up. It was really messed up. But I mean, that's you either kill the man or the dog. You can't kill both. No. What a dick. Then it's not effective. Oh, it was then very effective. It was just exploitative. But is there a difference? Yes. What's the difference? Between effective and exploitative? Yeah. Effective is saying something honest and eliciting a reaction from people because you've put your heart into something. Exploitative is doing something for the ex express purpose of eliciting a reaction, not based or rooted in your own desire to emote. Well, I, I think there's a correlation between the two. I think you can have both. I think, I think there can uh, It's not a one or the other. No, it's not a is one or the ever, other. Is it though, in any scenario, at mm, any time? Probably not. Can you think of any like clear one or the others? Hmm. Not at the moment. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Usually ever. Um, wait, let me go. Let, before we wrap up, let me just see if I have anything more interesting that I want to ask you. Um, you guys have any questions? Yeah, you guys have any questions? You want to ask him anything? While she's looking at her cards. Oh, who would you like to collab with in the future? Like, who do you want to write a song for? Besides, now that you gave us four or with? Yeah. Is it a duet? Well, or you like could do you could do with and then four. Well, both. I mean, they're usually. I guess they're probably all the same answer. So it was, a, it was an unnecessary distinction for me to look for. All right, so who do you want to sing with on a song? Like her. You're both on the song. I really want to oh, do yeah. a song with her. Yeah. That'd be cool. It'd be cool to do a song with Anthony. Yeah. Um, but who, like, do you have a, like, if you could write a song for anybody and you're not singing on it, you're not producing it, you're just giving them the song, who, who is it? Mm, Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, if you could have a Dunkin' Latte with anybody on the planet that's alive, who would it be? I'm having a Dunkin' Latte with you right now, and I'm um, greatly enjoying it. But, but I'm not having a Lunga Dunkin' Latte. You're only having one. If, you've ever, if you want to be watched having a Dunkin' Latte by someone. Yeah, who do you want to like watch you eat at Dunkin' Donuts? Watch me eat? Yeah. You, I've, you I've just come up with an answer. I'm going to look through just to see if I have any last minute questions, because I know they're getting mad. Um, Who's getting mad? Like, you don't have a lot of time with me. That's what they keep telling me. No, oh, okay. Oh, Patty wrote something on his paper, but I couldn't see it. <laughs> oh, what? You're, so you're not really a Raptors fan. That's pretty embarrassing. I mean, would you like... Uh, I, have an, I have a reason. I have a justification. Is it LeBron? No, it's a buddy of mine got a coaching job for the Lakers. Oh, see, you just, you're, you're such a friends. name dropper. It's like, whoa, like, you just some clout and all that. <laughs> yeah, but you kind of, like, you kind of explained. You could have just, like, you let it go. You accused me of, of betraying my hometown, and I had to defend myself. So, you're, Blame JD. You're, you're, you're Duncan question. Yeah, who do I want to watch me have a cup of who coffee? Who do you want to go to Dunkin' Donuts with and order a coffee with and maybe talk to and enjoy time with, you know, pick their brain, um, mm. share emotions with. I've been like, this is such a nerdy answer. Yeah. But I've been like on a, such an Esther Perel kick. Okay. That I would love to get coffee with Esther Perel. I don't know who that is. She's an author. Okay. Um, and she's a podcaster and she's a psychiatrist. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and she's really smart. 
Yeah, most I would say like most of the things I say that people think are wise are Come just from me her? plagiarizing her. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, I actually do have one question. Is are we is this album is it like a are you gonna like go full Adele on us? Are we getting like a breakup album? Mm -mm. Okay. I would say it's the widest emotional range of any body of work I have made. Because I found, like, originally I was making a concept album, and then I got really bored about talking about the same shit over and over again. Um, so I realized that my favorite things about being a human were when lots of emotions went together at the same time. And that rarely in my life was I ever feeling one thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, it was all just a big mush of humanness. Yeah. So I tried to make that kind of the vibe of the album. It's just like a lot of feelings that maybe don't seem consistent, but they are because so often our, our most human, our biggest, most joyful, most painful, saddest, m most hilarious, most loving, m most sexy moments are all like kind of meshed into this weird puddle of existence. Absolutely, because you can't feel good without feeling the bad. That's a Brene Brown one. I steal shit from her, too. Yeah, yeah, She's amazing. Yeah. I've watched her TED Talk a thousand times. All right, so listen, in all seriousness, thank you. Thank you for being here. You're so welcome. Thanks for asking me things and caring. Um, I tried, and thank you for being really smart and giving really smart and great answers. And we are really excited about the album. I know I am. I like the song. Um, and I hopefully I do get to see you at the there garden. Are Twelve more. I'm so excited, you guys. If you haven't checked out, I don't miss you. It's really, really good. Um, it's gonna make you feel things. And the album's coming when? Do we have a date? September. September. Okay, cool. It's a good month. Um, JFK Sacks. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. To see more videos like this, check out DuncanLatteLounge.com. And if you're posting on social, use the hashtag DuncanLatteLounge.